When you want to scan your sample using high magnification lens and your sample is too big to fit into acquisition area, you should use the function called tile scan, which is available right here and shows up right here. Um, the tile scan option allows you to scan your sample tile by tile and then it will put all the tiles together into a bigger image. Um, and the size of each tile will be the size of your acquisition area. Um, to stitch the tiles uh, together in, in a better way, it's good to have some overlap between them. To my experience, 15% gives quite nice results. Now you can see how the tiles overlap. Um, there are such options as bidirectional scan, uh, in which case the tiles will be scanned from left to right and then from right to left. It might save you some time um, because you reduce the movements of the stage. There is also an online stitching, which to my experience doesn't give as nice a result as post-processing stitching. So I wouldn't advise to use it. Um, and you can see that there are three ways you can perform the tile scan. Uh, in the center grid option, your current position is going to be used as the center tile, and then the total number of tiles are defined by the numbers you type in here. So in this case, I'm going to have this uh, position as a center tile and then there will be three on three tile skin. And if I click on start experiment, the software starts scanning using the options I selected in the tile scan and in the other types over here. And as you can see, the major problem of this centered grid option is that it's very difficult to estimate how many tiles you're going, going to need to cover your whole sample. And also, sometimes you are not as centered as you wish to be. Uh, bounding grid is a very helpful option. Uh, the software asks you to uh, define the margins of the area you're going to scan, and then it automatically calculates how many tiles you're going to need to cover this area. So if I click on Live, and go to the very top of my sample and at this position and then move to the very bottom of my sample. Now I define the top and the bottom of my scanning area and I will do the same with the left and the right. This will be a left. And this will be right. As you can see, the software uh, estimated the area I need to scan and then it calculated the number of tiles I need to cover this area. And when I click on Start Experiment, I will see that my sample is now nicely covered with tiles. The convex hull option is very similar. Uh, the only difference between the convex and bounding grid options uh, is that convex hull tries to, um, to minimize the number of tiles you're going to need to perform your uh, scan. And as you can see, it will most probably cut off uh, part of my sample somewhere here. So when you use convex hull option, uh, it's better to have more than uh, four reference points for big round object. So I can go back to the live scan and add this position and then somewhere close to the top. And then the very top. And I think I have covered my sample quite well. And if I click 
if it will start the experiment, we will see the result. The great benefit of convex hull option is that it saves you time which will be spent on scanning this area and it also doesn't photo bleach your sample as much as um, the bounding grid option would do. Um, when you are done with um, performing the tile scanning, you can go to the processing tab and select the stitch uh, option and then stitch your tile together to get rid of these borders. So you select the image you want to stitch, you select how straight the stitching should be, and then you click on apply. And as you can see, the image now is much smoother. Actually, it, it's difficult to believe that it wasn't imaged in just one go. And we can do the same for the convex hole. Apply. Here we go.